Hello everybody and welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fancy Premier League. My name's Serge. Yes, it really does. My name's James. It does revolve around Fancy Premier League. Um, this is the first time we're doing Clash of the Correspondents remotely, isn't it, James? Uh, it's the first time you and I have been apart when we've done this, yeah. Yeah, this is bizarre. Why don't you introduce our guests? Because anyone watching on YouTube, they're already there. They're already on screen. This is rocking and rolling. Yeah, well, we are joined today by our Aston Villa correspondent, Adam Hopcroft. How are you, Adam? Yeah, really good. Thanks, guys. And we're joined by our Sheffield United correspondent, Tomo, FPL Blade. How are you, Tomo? Doing good. Glad to be back. Wow, nice. you guys are bloody important to FPL managers suddenly in the next two weeks, I think. Now we know we've got the announcement. And we think uh, we should probably timestamp this and say we're recording this early evening on Wednesday, just in case we get any sort of fixture announcements or anything. But I think we anticipate that the Premier League season will restart Obviously, we know the 17th. I think you guys, by the sounds of it, are going to go first, 6 p.m. kickoff UK time. Um, so the eyes of the world will be on you guys, and uh, certainly FPL managers will be as well, as we know it's going to be part of a, a double game week. Um, Adam, if I can come to you first. Bar Jack Grealish, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah, good, good question. Well, hopefully we'll have some more options. I think, um, I think the break has come as a, a really a, a best possible time for Villa because we had the last game as well where we got beat by Leicester 4-0. Mm. And I think, I think we needed this break. And I think the big, big difference we will have um, is John McGinn will be back. And actually, when looking back, I think he's been, he's been forgotten about probably because it's meant Grealish has had to do more. But... When McGinn was in the team, we weren't really, um, we, you know, we were, we, we, we were struggling a little bit, but we weren't in the relegation fight that we were. And we actually started re reasonably well to the season. So I think McGinn will make a big difference. And I actually think the fact that we've had this break will give him, has given him enough time to get some level of fitness. And it's mm. actually meant the other players' fitness would have deteriorated. So it's a, he's naturally pretty, got a good engine anyway. So... I think McGinn is really interesting. I think another fact. I, I would um, sorry, Adam, to drop you. The one thing I would I would agree with you everything. I don't agree that he's been forgotten. I reckon FPL managers out there right now, because of the fact that we're going to have so much more rotation because of COVID and what have you, need cheaper options to make sure that you've got fifteen players that are playing as opposed to just eleven and chucking four on the bench. And McGinn is going to be well up there. I reckon his ownership when we come back. Partially because of free here and what have you is going to be through the roof because he is such a good option at that price. He's brilliant. And I think um, mm. when I say forgotten, I mean more from the, the, the sense that we play a, a long layout, right? Yeah, mm. we've played a long period of time without him. And we, he's such a key player because of, if you look at our midfield, we've got Grealish who, who, who can pick the ball and run at people. We've then got quite deep line midfielders, but there isn't anybody to transition the ball. And McGinn is so good at that. And, um, I think what will happen is we'll have a midfield three. McGinn will be in there with two defensively minded players, probably Louise Nakamba, maybe Drinkwater. And it'll have El Ghazi and Grealish on the wings. I think one other factor, another player to mention is El Ghazi because um, the, 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 one of the other effects is going to be, it's almost going to be like playing a training match to an extent. And um, I know um, Dean Smith's called quite a few of them training ground players. El Ghazi's probably the worst. He's... Um, he, he, so would be good on the training ground, but doesn't necessarily translate over to match point. And I've read Grealish saying that every time he gets the ball 25 yards out, he's putting it in the top corner. So it could be a positive impact on some players like that because they're not playing in front of big crowds. Maybe a little bit of the pressure is off. Um, and I actually, I actually think whilst I think Villa, the Villa fans have been great this, this season, I don't necessarily know. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing the fans aren't there for all of all of the matches. I even think then in the West Ham game and the Newcastle game, that evens it out and we've got more chance of getting um, three points. So I think there'll be, there'll be some options for Villa. Hopefully they'll be revitalised. I'm hope you know, it could easily go the other way and they could pick up from where, 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 they, where they left off. I think the only other player I haven't mentioned is Samata, who was mentioned on Twitter earlier. Um, I like the look of him. He attacks anything. I think he'd head a bowling ball. He's that, you know, he's that aggressive with when the, 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 the ball comes in the box. 
Um, I think if we get the crosses in, he'll get goals, more so than Wesley. He puts himself about more. And I think, again, the fitness side of things, I think that could work in his favour because it would bring players, it'll make other players less fit. So relatively, he'll be in a fitter position, if that makes sense. Can I just, before we come on to, to Tomo, can I just cover from McGinn a little bit, Adam, in terms of... Yeah, of course. He obviously started the season very well. I mean, it's four attacking returns in the first seven and then only one in the following 10 before injury. And I'm not including the, the seven-minute period against Southampton when he picked yeah. up the injury. But there was a shift in, we spoke about this at the time, a shift in the system for that Norwich game that came in game week eight, which obviously then really benefited Grealish. And it just makes me wonder if McGinn will come back playing a different role and therefore isn't the FPL asset that we thought he was at the start and comes I, back to get I the best out of Grealish. I don't think it was anything to do with the formation. Looking back at it, I think he was really fatigued. The guy, because he played a lot for Scotland. I mean, he played a lot of football. Played every Bearing minute in mind to injury. Yeah, and the championship season's quite demanding. And you could see that he was still giving his all. But And I think that's probably one of the reasons he got injured, is, is the, the fatigue and, and you know got to him. He wasn't the same in terms of energy um, going box to box. I think with Gre- Grealish or, you know, 10, whatever, whatever you want to call it, wide forward. And I think with having the protection of um, Nakamba and, um, and Louise or, or Drinkwater in there, it should, in theory, allow him to play really close to and push on and bomb in the box, make late runs into the box, which he's got in his locker. So I, I'd, 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 I know what you're saying, because I, I think at the time I thought it and a lot of people thought it, but looking back he was so exhausted and he was he's not the sort of person to give up either he'll keep going even you know when he's when he's struggling but he he will be such I mean Villa fans of you know all think of him very very highly and he's the perfect player to have coming back into your team because of what he will do to the rest of the team as well. Tomo it doesn't really matter which attacking Villa assets we pick they're, they're not scoring anyway are they? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, Honestly, is, it, is it straightforward is it just definitely three defensive players is, is it straightforward or um, I don't th- I think it's free I think Flake is a very good pick at his price yeah agreed he's a fifth midfielder and you know he's okay to leave on your bench if you want to I think he's going to play every game majority of the minutes um, he's been our best player all season he's, he, he's very important to us so I think you either go three Defensive or two defensive and flag. I'm kind of leaning to two defensive and flag personally. Same. I'm, I'm with you on that. I think Fleck. But like if you if you buy Fleck, what is he now? Five million. Um, and yeah. you've got a couple of defenders. Chuck in McGinn and even Grealish at six point eight. Suddenly, if you're free hitting in that first week, you can afford the most. You can afford a Bamiang and the Guerrero and Kevin De Bruyne and all the other players that you want from Arsenal or Man City if you do, because these guys are just such good value for that free hit. So I think, yeah, uh, Fleck, Fleck for me is a must with two other defenders. And you can go with Egan and, um, and maybe and whoever else you want. Stevens, who's the most expensive, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think Baldock or Stevens, one of them, and then you can pair that with O'Connell, Egan, Basham. They're all going to start and play most minutes, which is going to be vital, right, for this rest of the season. Same with the Villa guys. You know, you got to pick players that are going to play um, past that 60 minutes. I mean, I, rotation is going to be brutal. So, I kind of lean that way. Is, is there any fear? I, I, the one I'm a little conscious of, because my instinct, Tomo, is to go Stevens, Bulldog, and then make a decision where I'm going, sort of O'Connell or Egan plus Fleck. That's where my headspace is at. And part of the reason for not mentioning Henderson is is I think Leno is probably the safest way to go with Arsenal if you want to yeah. throw one of them in defensively. But we'll, we'll talk to Adam about that next week. But are, are, is there any concern on Stevens from a rotation perspective? It doesn't feel like there's any on Bulldog. Um, so he was injured um, for the last game, uh, Norwich game. He didn't play. So he's come back from injury. Obviously, they've not played any games since then. So I don't know about match fitness. I and mean, actually, Ben Osborne played quite well at that left wing back position. So, you know... I could see him utilising with Stevens. Baldock really doesn't have anybody on the right side, so I think he's more nailed on. So I think I'd rather go Baldock over Stevens. Plus, Baldock's pretty keeping up with him. I think he's outscored Stevens this season. So, um, yeah, I think Baldock would be the safer pick between the two. 
Yeah, he's a Bulldog 0.1 cheaper at 5.1 than Stevens 5.2, five points extra for, for Bulldog as well. Uh, Adam, what, what, what's your thoughts on Sheffield United? Because... I mean, let, let's let's just hypothesise at the moment that we're either on limited transfers or potentially a lot of listeners may be out of free hit, and we'll, we'll come back to individual ideas. But if if you're in a position to free hit in in the game week we return to, Adam, is your instinct to go defensive as well, or would you want someone like Fleck in there as well? I've got Ender Stevens currently after after that big build up to him and saying Bold looks a better pick, but I don't know. I think I I'm not a a fan of Fleck for FPL unless you're going to be using it as a bench boost because it, it, he's, a, he's a bit of an awkward price. He's close to five million, so it means you have to rotate. And I hate doing that with the the um, the, the I suppose the twelfth or thirteenth man. So for me, I, I would I, I think the defensive options are the best best shouts. Um, so I would look at um, Stevens, Baldock. Egan, budget depending. I think Henderson, if you've got rotation, because does he miss the United game? I think that's right, isn't it? So yeah. if, you, if you're further down the line, it could cause, could cause you issues. Um, I'm just hoping, though, with, with Sheffield United, I think they had really good momentum coming up to the end of it. And I think you, you know, you're on decent form. I'm just hoping that sometimes when you put a break in the way, it could disrupt the momentum. And I think we're going to be the closest. Um, it's almost going to be like pre-season where I think it will even up between the teams a little bit. And it's going to be hard to predict. It's going to be who are the fittest players. And I think I think this is an interesting game because if this would have happened in March time, it, I'd fancy you strongly. But now I think it's evened it up a little bit. And I don't know if the, the lack of crowd will play into Villa or Sheffield United. Hands. It's a really difficult one, that, because you'd think the 12th man, but then does it, maybe sometimes put pressure on players. So it'll be quite intriguing. I think when you look in the Bundesliga, it's been, um, there's been a lot of away wins, haven't there? So yeah, it'll be, I hope, I'm, I'm just hoping the momentum's been taken out of you. Yeah, Villa we'll return to two home games. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Wow. Yeah, exactly. You know, I just, I was going to say that the, the most asked questions so far in the main podcast that we do when people send in questions on Twitter is, Who's going to be affected most by the layoff and not? Who's going to be affected most by the lack of crowd and not? And if I had to um, kind of put my opinion on it, I, I mean, Chris Wilder is someone that I would look at and trust to always get his team up. Because I've seen on occasions where Sheffield United have had bad first halves and come out in the second half and turned a couple of games around this season. I've seen him do that. And I feel like, Behind closed doors, Sheffield United are probably a team that would suffer more because they need that crowd to be behind them. But then on the flip side, you've got Chris Wilder that can get a team up. Whereas I look at Dean Smith. Now, he was on the, on the ropes a little bit around Christmas time coming out. Had the season carried on, what's to say that he might not have got the chop had you stayed in the relegation zone? I don't feel like I have as much faith in Dean Smith as I do in, in Wilder. And so... I don't know. I'll be interested in both of your opinions on your own managers and how your own teams will cope without I mean, fans there. I think that's completely valid. And, you know, I think Wilder has really enhanced his reputation this season. But um, I think for me, uh, I think Dean Smith, he was on the verge. He was struggling. I think the cup run helped him. And I think the, the best possible thing to happen, obviously not for the world, but was to, was to give Villa and Dean Smith a break and everyone so they can reflect, they can, you know, and it will be make or break. I, I see us coming back with McGinn, with all of our players fit and having a chance to regroup and actually making a real, real good account of ourselves and better than we would have done had the season continued. Um, your point you've said on Wilder is, you know, you, you don't see him getting complacent. I just can't see it. But I think, I think... I think it's possible that um, maybe the first game, Villa could be in a position where they're really up for it because technically they're pushing them out of the relegation zone. So the motivation factor for Villa will be huge for this game. Um, first one back. And I'm just hoping that, um, it, I suppose it's more hope than anything that we can just gonna, Sheffield see, my, United my, my, cold. <laughs> my, I was going to really ask you that, that kind of um, what you're saying in terms of, Villa coming back and the, the break doing everyone good and you think it will do you good. How much of that, and, and this is a hard, hard question I understand, is claret and blue tinted 
kind of glasses that you're looking at a villa from i think i think we've got every opportunity to do so we've pretty much got a fully fit squad so i think we've got every opportunity to do so um it's going to be down to the players and the manager and they're saying all the right things at the moment we've got i think we've got the players to get out of it with McGinn, with Grealish, with Samata. I think we've got the quality to get out of it. Ming's Marshall in defence. It's just going to be how much they want it. And I think the crowd makes it more of an even playing field where they could get five wins if they're really up for it. It's just going to be... Injuries will play a part. And I'm sure there'll be some twists with maybe some positive tests and all that for, for people. But it's going to be how much they want it. And I think everything is set. They've got a chance now. And I don't, I felt if after that Leicester game, if it would have continued, I think we'd have gone. I think we've got a chance, but it's, it's up to them to take it. And um, hopefully they will do. Everyone's got like a, a second opportunity. So ho- hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see it. it. I think in terms of what I would say is that I'm probably down the middle on terms of, is it Villa bias or do looking at it objectively, McGinn back and the stopping of momentum and actually not playing um, Newcastle and West Ham in front of their own fans makes them games more winnable. So they're the things that I'm looking at objectively, but we okay. were one of the worst three teams for a reason. Um, whereas, whereas Tomo, I know you're, you're gunning for fourth, mate. No questions, no ifs, no buts, no doubts. Why not? Absolutely. Yeah, man. Five points behind a game in hand, so why not? Can um, it be done? Of course it can be done. Why can't it be? I agree. We've got yeah, good, why not? We've got I'm for it. Decent pictures. We've got decent pictures of playing all the teams around us uh, still. Spurs, Wolves, Man U, Chelsea. Yeah, you can, can add three points to your title already with that, mate. <laughs> yeah, mm. we're, it is going to affect us by not having the crowds. I think, like we talked about on a 24 hour stream. Um, but while they will have us up for it, we're one of the fittest teams in the league. And we, we don't have anything to lose. So why not go for it? So, um, no one's figured us out how to play against us yet, still, you know, formation wise. Um, so, I'm feeling pretty positive, to be honest. Can you I ask have... Tomo? Go on, Serge, sorry. I was just going to say, you don't have worries about lack of crowd and stuff. You think they'll get through it? I think they'll be up for it, for sure. It's mm-hmm. wilder. They will be up for it. If they're not up for it, they won't be in the team next week. I think there's uh, j- just to cover that bit off. I mean, I've made the case that I think Sheffield United are one of the sides that may not benefit from this. But it, with all 20 teams, you could make positives and negatives, and but we don't really know how it's going to react. Why would I ask you, Tommy, just to take it back to FPL, considering Villa have been one of the poorest sides defensively, is there any love for the idea of going with, say, a Billy Sharp for? for if for free hitters, not not to buy, but say for that double game week, Villa away, Newcastle away, rather than going for the defensive and the flat. Is there any love to go that way for it? Um, it'll be a big differential. Yeah, a big, big get, differential. Get, get McGoldrick. I would, I would actually, <laughs> I would enjoy you owning McGoldrick, Tom, as much as owning Jason Yule. As well. <laughs> <laughs> I think in a free hit, it could happen, but I, I think McBurney and Sharp will start, but Moose and McGoldrick are fit and available too, so there's definitely going to be some rotation. Even if they start, I can still see them coming on for 20, 30 minute spells, right? So a free hit, I think Sharp's the pick out of the four. I think he's going to play. Um, and he's, he loves to score against Villa. I mean, last time we played, he scored a hat trick. Park, yeah, he season. did, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's a good point. It was a great game. So, <laughs> was it? It was. It was like, actually a game I enjoyed. That was. Yeah, so, I enjoyed the first 18 minutes. That was, <laughs> I was going to say, for oh, those it who was don't ro- know the story, it was United robbery, were, to be fair. Yeah, United were freeing it up with 10 minutes to go and it finished 3 free. Um, yeah. Adam, can I ask you about yourselves defensively? It's, it's obviously yeah. been a, a, a difficult period, and uh, Tom Heaton might actually be close to fitness. I understand Villa are trying to get him registered because they never bothered for the second half of the Correct. season. The shooting, yeah, yeah. he was out for the season. Uh, do you a think there's? I don't know how close he is. Is there any chance he can take the place from Rayner? And also, again, sort of to reference for free hitters, my first thought is someone like Mings or Target, who I'll get two games out. But is that suicide? Yeah, 
from an FPL perspective. Yeah, don't trust Villa defence. I think um, the goalkeeper situation will be interesting because I think Nyland has got a chance because um, Rayner not only suffered with COVID-19 pretty badly, but he was, I mean, he was at fault for a couple of the goals for Leicester. And he, he, I, I didn't realise how slow he is now because he, he, he used to be a, little, a lot quicker than that. So I think potentially Nyland will, will come in. I, I think Heaton, whether he's going to, I don't think he'll make it from the comments the other day, but you're absolutely right about the re-registering. I'm in the same position with Wesley. Again, who I don't think will make it. Um, I think defensively, I'd stay away from Villa. If you're free hitting, possibly, but there's got to be better options. I'm just looking at all the, almost all the other 19 teams are probably yeah, better options. Well, well, think, put, put it this way, I'm thinking it like this. And again, we don't quite know what's going to happen yet, but be it unlimited or free transfers, one way or the other, there's going to be a massive temptation to fill the team if people go down this route with 12 players from the two of you and, and City yeah. and Arsenal. Do I want Arsenal defensive when they've got Man City away and Brighton away? And I know that the home away thing might not matter. I've already said I'd probably go Leno as the one for potential save points. Then you could go like an Aubameyang, someone else. City, you know, you probably want to go free attacking. So uh, am I therefore, am I defaulting into free Sheffield United defensively and having a little bit of attack from all the others? That's what I, what I think a lot of people might do. Uh, for me, I think this is a bit of a red herring of a double game week. I think the players are just back. There'll be very few players that play um, because they can do five subs as well. I, I think the fitness players will struggle, particularly at the intensity. I think for the attacking players, we might see a lot of substitutions. I think there's better options in other defences that will play one game and set you up long term I, I actually think it's a waste of it I think it's a waste of any chip because the first game of the season which it sort of is really there's so many unknowns and I think what we're coming back to there's so many unknowns there's loads of questions so you, you're almost making decisions with limited information you look at City and you look at our, you know other than maybe a Bamiang who might play the both but I think City on a practice match destroy Arsenal anyway so I think that suit that suits them, and I think with Villa and Sheffield United, I think yeah, Grealish and maybe McGinn could be options, and the Sheffield United defence. But I personally wouldn't rip up a team and go heavy in either one of those teams because I think there's just too many unknowns, and um, you know the, the you may not get another chance to use it in a double, but at least you'll be able to use your chips with more information. Because I think three or four weeks in, we'll start to see a pattern. You'll start to see the teams who are adapting better. You'll start to see a lot more. So that that I, I'm not, from a double point of view, I'm not excited. I'm excited about we're the first game back and hopefully we can uh, get out of the relegation okay. zone. And then if the season finishes and we're out of the relegation zone, we'll just go with what, how the table is. <laughs> so Adam's, Adam's FPL history, as you know, is very good. I feel like I've been put firmly in my place. Can, I wasn't I intended to, sorry. <laughs> I was gonna, uh, no, 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 it's great, mate. It's great. If we're, if we're talking about FPL history, I wanted to talk, like, Tomo, sitting third in the FPL Correspondence League, only six points behind Dan Loco Lord, which is nothing in FPL. 34,000 overall. Um, and coming back to it, you must uh, 1260 in America. Just win America if you get the highest rank in the US. Go on, do it for Planet FPL <laughs> correspondence. They're pretty happy. <laughs> what, yeah. what are you hoping for now, now that FPL is back? Have you set, are you going to set yourself a top 10k target? Top 10k target. I came 12,000 last year, so first top 12, 10, 10k. So yeah. yeah, so I think it's doable. Um, I kind of hear what Adam's saying. I think. Are we going to get any more doubles after this? I'm not sure how it works out with the FA Cup, the fixtures yet. Uh, but if we get unlimited transfers, I think I'm going to bench boost. Um, and I, I'm thinking maybe doing a flight and again double up in midfield as my fourth, fifth midfielder. Maybe rotating those as well down the line. I don't know if that's something anyone's thinking about because I want to make sure I've got a strong bench moving forward. Is it, you know, rotation is going to be crazy, right? So I think flight and again could be a good fourth mid rotation um mm. especially if play bench boost yeah i can um, see that i think we uh, can all agree on don't go near the fodder like get yourselves mm. if, you, if you're going to go down this route of, of wild carding or if there's unlimited or anything like that like, don't be getting in your 3.9 million defenders and stuff like that you'll you we, we've <laughs> yeah. covered this you're, you're gonna need playing squad which is kind of why i lean back to someone like tyro mings adam because 
I, I know what you're saying, but he's going to play twice, isn't he? he? There's no way he's getting dropped. If, if he's got two legs together, he's playing, right? Oh, 100. Uh, that, I would that, hope so, yes. And that draws you towards that sort of player in a double game week. I think I, I haven't seen the fixtures yet, but if it's if it's true to um, if it's true to form, um, yourselves and Chelsea, Chelsea, yeah, and I'd, I think I'd, I'd fancy Chelsea to score against us. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd find I I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet in either game, based on based on the on the, on the form. We're more likely to against Sheffield United because I think Chelsea how they set up and. Uh, they, you know, I think they're more. I, 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 I think we'll struggle for clean sheets, um, and until I see any evidence to, I think it's how Dean Smith plays as well. Um, there's very little emphasis on defence, so I, I don't think. I, I, I think we'll struggle for clean sheets. What, look just, elsewhere. Just to cover on on FPL, Adam, can I ask what chips do you have left? Do you know? Yeah, so I've got um, I've got everything other than triple camp, captain, which are blue on Mane. So uh, join the James rank. You yeah, know, you talk about. Tom is riding high now. Tommy, you said your rank is that is is thirty four thousand right now. Um, the man to your left, right, whatever on screen, has never had a finish worse than that. <laughs> He's never had a six figure rank, and his really? lowest is thirty three thousand from what I can thirty two thousand five hundred. Sorry. <laughs> um, so are you hoping? Obviously, you're one hundred and fifteen k now. You must be looking to make sure. Um, that, yeah. So I, I was on Woods and Upwards. It it ruined my momentum actually. The the break, but I I think. Um, I've not really been this position all season, so I've, I've been around three hundred thousand for a while. So mm. I started to put a bit of a run together. So I'm I'm going to, I'm still going for top ten k. I think it can be done. Um, but I saw the FPL general post the other day, just about having fun with it, and that's what I'm going to do. I just get, I'm not going to care about ownership. I'm just going to pick the players that I want to play, and just have a bit of fun and see where it goes. It does almost seem I don't know to anybody else, but it almost seems like. You've got like nine weeks or however, however many game week. Just have a bit of fun and just to see what happens. And, you know, I think this season's been disrupted quite a bit anyway. And, uh, uh, you know, it, if I finish three, three, four hundred thousand, so be it. If, you know, if, if, if I don't have another 10K finish, fantastic. But I think having enjoy, uh, enjoying it is pretty important. And I think we, I think we will get to see with all the football. Yeah. The only difficulty is there's a lot of uh, cash leagues kicking around as well um, that people are in. And it's those that I think people are, are more focused on maybe than overall rank. It's like, just let me get my money back from wherever uh, people have put their, their, their quids in. If oh, they're I'm, in a position I'm, to close. I'm, I'm putting an asterisk next to my rank, whatever it is. <laughs> it's going to be rubbish, right? So it's definitely yeah. an asterisk coming next to mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the rest of the I, I actually... Unfortunately, I had um, we had the, one of one of our uh, patrons, Lee Jackson, who's a Villa fan as well, had them uh, message me on the, on our Slack channel the other day saying that he didn't enjoy listening to our pod on Monday because I said that I, that I think Villa are going to go down this season. Um, that's unfortunately, I, I just don't see. You I can't see. I can't see beyond this. Around. What you say, Adam, in terms of conceding goals, you're kind of highlighting yeah, if you, it. If you keep conceding goals, you're going to lose some games. Whereas on the on the flip side. I actually can see, and I would like Sheffield United. Forget this old Tevez season of West Ham and Sheffield United. Not like it. I, I can see you getting fourth, and I would love it if you did. I actually would. I like seeing the top six and all of that getting disrupted as much as possible. Yeah. Oh, we'll fuck that. It's Wednesday, won't we? <laughs> Tomo, don't act yeah, like you're short of words. Go for it, mate. Come on, come on. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm hoping I get fourth, and I'm hoping West Ham get relegated. So. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle, Tevez, full circle. Circular life. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting down at the bottom. Yeah. I think it's going to be a battle for sure. So, um, you, you, you said um, you're thinking of bench boosting when we come back. Does, does that include Villa assets then? Yeah, I think Grealish is nailed in my team. I've had him for quite a chunk of the season. He's going to play. He's a great player, right? I mean, and then the other one in the game. I don't know if I want to double up, though. I don't know. It's tough. So it's just going to be tough, right? I don't think there's going to be a template team for the rest of the season. I mean, captains will be all different. I don't know. It's going to be difficult, right? With the big teams, Liverpool and City, not much to play for once Liverpool win the title. It's going to be tough. I think the fact we're going to have the, 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 the planners will have a lot of chips left. And 
they're going to get used in single game weeks in in a lot of occurrences. So I think you, you're going to get a, a real variation in terms of how people are going to play this. It's going to be so individual circumstance in terms of when you unleash these. I had not really given much thought, Adam, to your idea of which I can't argue against in terms of wait and see what it looks like because there is obviously a massive unknown in terms of what we're coming back. My FPL head in me says, well, this is the only chance I've potentially got to use a double game week. I've got to take advantage of it. Um, so it's really interesting hearing your your flip on that, basically. If um, if I've got two free transfers, which I should do because I'd, I'd save them, I'm going to probably get one. Well, it'd be interesting because I'd, I'd, I'd had it saved prior to um, whatever, whatever game week we finish, but I'd saved it anyway. So if I have to, anyway, I was going to um, bring in Grealish and Sterling. I'm going to probably bring in Sterling for Salah and go. I've, I've just got a feeling he will start the season. So that that's probably what I would do. I can still bring in Sterling anyway for for, for a single free, but I, th- I think someone like that could could start this. He's naturally quite fit as well, and um, I think with the Sane news of he's, he's pretty much done. He's going to Bayern, isn't it? So I don't think he'll get much game time. I was just thinking Sane is going to go mental. Come on, I, I was think... just about to say just buy him and Captain Sane and saves yourself a few quid. But um... I, I I think he'll go to Bayern just from everything I've read. I think and and that might put him a bit more out of favour. Which which obviously again I suppose if he's in the team it could help Sterling as well, but. I'm gonna if if that happens, I'm gonna set up a fancy Bundesliga team just so I can own Leroy. Just for Sane. If he ends up at Bayern, up at Bayern it's gonna be a dead team. But trust me, Leroy Sane uh, is a dead captain for the entire season. Just so I can tweet about it, will be will be happening. Tomo, we haven't mentioned John Lundstrom at all. People, I knew that was people, coming. People will want to know, mate. Um, can I plead the fifth on that one? <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly can, mate. Yeah, I mean, look, as of now, and obviously everybody's team is dead. He's still sitting in 39% of teams. Um, he'd obviously scored in that Bournemouth fixture not long before we we shut down. Is there any thoughts that we could restart? Because he seems, you know, his fitness is quite good. I know you'd said he was tired sort of in the run-up to the shutdown and it was it was natural that Sander Berge was going to play. Is there any chance we restart and he plays? twice and we all miss it. I, I think there is a chance, you know, I, I, that position isn't suited for Burge, really. It's Lynch's position. Burge player plays in uh, Norwood's position and I don't see Norwood getting dropped. So, no. I don't know. He might, he might go with Lundstrom. So, but, you know, I think if either one play, I can see him coming up, you know, 60 minutes and the one coming on and shuffling around, but, it could be interesting, right? I mean, free hit, why not? If you've, if you've got lunchroom. If I have lunchroom, I'd probably keep him. Well, you, know, you certainly would for the first week, wouldn't you? You'd take that chance, I think. You, you, wouldn't, yeah. uh, you, would, you wouldn't sell him unless you were free hitting to look elsewhere or something. Um, yeah. It's going to be fascinating so, how it plays out. I think mean, there's every chance he could get back in, you know. Yeah. And you but, know what? If he gets but I wouldn't time, look at him myself. Yeah, but if he gets a game time, he can score double-digit holes. We've seen it a few times, right? So he might get a game and a half, mightn't he? So he might, which, which would be perfect, wouldn't it? Really? Yeah. So he well, takes that. Uh, imagine he starts twice and comes off in sixty-five minutes twice. Mm. Yeah, he, he, might, he, he, he might be banking points that others can't get, and with the amount of subs that we anticipate, that sort of occurrence is more likely. Of course, it can go the other way, and he plays fifty-five minutes twice, right? So. It's just because we bought, bought him so cheap, and now if you're buying him back, you're paying 4.9 million, whereas everybody bought him at 4, 4.1, 4.2. We sold him to move away from him to get a Charlie Taylor or someone cheap to bank that money to use elsewhere. Now to take that money back plus more to get Lundstrom back, I don't know if many managers will do it other than their teams. I, I don't see it. Yeah, it depends on your rank, right? If I was, if I had a big rank, and I would go sharp Lundstrom and one of the defenders, why not? You know, what are you going to lose? I mean, it could be a huge differential, sharp and yeah. lunchroom. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I've that. got a big rank and I ain't doing that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're we, calling it? When we say James? big, we mean big in numbers. We don't mean as in big as he could. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I held on to him and I only sold him a couple of weeks ago, but I held on to him for the Bournemouth game where I picked up that, that goal when he came on. Um, just at the end, but then I did sell him, and I don't see myself being able to go back to Lundstrom. Yeah. Adam, pick three to go down, mate. 
Um, I would say Norwich, Bournemouth. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's not sitting on the fence there. <laughs> Norwich, Norwich, Bournemouth, and because because of, of my audience, West Ham. Yes. Just I, I, I just think the club. Yeah, I think the club. Have, I think they've got problems, and I think they've got more problems than Villa. And I think we'll we'll. Yeah, I think it might it might come down to the last game of the season though. Yeah, so it might. It might. Do you remember last time you were on Clash of the Correspondents? Yes, yeah, yeah. About you coming? Well, I've had an email from West Ham saying I'm getting the club cash credit for that ticket, so we ain't watching that game together. <laughs> <laughs> we can zoom. You or never something, know. But... Let's you zoom might, and you watch might it. Both, yeah, virtual pipe. Yeah. You might yeah, both still not? be playing each other next season in the wrong league. I'll be careful. Ooh. Yeah. Ouch. Summer, go on. Same question. Pick three to go down. Uh, Norwich. Villa, Villa, and West Ham. There you go. That's what he said. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Love it. Take. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I know we get a lot of stick for behind the scenes stuff that the owners do do, but I think there's also a lot that they do to, in, in setting, trying to set the club up for the future that um, goes a little bit unnoticed. I don't think there's as many behind the scenes problems as people say. Oh, don't get me wrong; it's not perfect though, by any stretch of the imagination, but. If we go, we go. I mean, I've said it uh, on the pod earlier, like Sheffield United used to, Villa would be, have been down, not that often. But um, with that league, I think a couple of seasons and we'll be back up again, if not sooner. So if we go, we go. I don't think it's it's worth worrying about now. Um, I'm, I'm the same probably, as well. That's probably, that's probably um, I said it on the show the other day when James asked me, I'm 35 to 40% shitting myself that we're going to get relegated, which is why I'm probably prepping myself for it. Um, I, don't, I, I think Brighton have been, look, they haven't won a game this year and both of you haven't mentioned Brighton. As no, do you know what? I, said, I overlooked Brighton. Yeah, Brighton's a, yeah. a, a good shout. It, it, it's going to come down to, it will come down to how people respond under the, the new conditions and I think we will see teams do well and we'll see t- teams struggle. Maybe some that we don't expect. Um, but I think, and I think you'll, the, the fitness will play a part and I think you'll see some teams come out of the blocks really focused. And other teams, I think this is the sort of thing where it could have knocked players mentally. They've got some players have got a lot of emotional baggage with what's going on in the world. And I think they're human, aren't they? So I think little things like this could have impacts, but we just don't know about it at the moment. Spot on that. Couldn't agree yeah. more. There's so many individual cases. We spoke about it on Monday, so didn't we? About like you, you just don't know how mentally how every single individual player is going to react to this, there's just, and there's no way of knowing. And then I, put I, out on a team scale, there's no way of knowing. It's all guesswork. With Spurs breaking all the social distancing rules in London parks and things, you'd expect them to be as fit as any team, wouldn't you? They've been training for long enough. So I uh, don't know about that. Mate. <laughs> they, they ain't they ain't fit because they ain't allowed to step out further than the penalty box defensively. Right? That's all he's doing is drilling them defensively. So fitness work isn't isn't there. Do I you know what, Tomo... James? I forgot what? Mourinho was your manager. <laughs> Hello, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a, that's a different podcast. Oh, I just wondered, Tom, I'm actually talking about um, sort of the mental side of it, but also you mentioned the fitness side. Obviously, this season, you've only played once a week for the majority, and now, obviously, you're still in the FA Cup as well. So it is going to be bang, bang, bang for yourself. Is there any fear from that sort of perspective? And I guess possibly comes back to the idea that, yeah, there might be more rotation with the Blades than what we're used to. Yeah, a little bit, but also all these players have played in League One in the Championship, and this is a really League One Championship schedule, right? I don't mean, you know, it's like last season, it's every, you know, Saturday and Tuesday in the Championship. So I can see it both ways, but yeah, we have had some long gaps between games this season. Um, yeah, so I, I can see that too. You, but. you put it in the comments on the uh, Planet. Uh, FPL 24 I remember you were saying that you enjoyed the championship because it was so thick and fast and I'll be honest that 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 did get me think like if we get relegated there's just going to be a lot of football to watch and so what it's football right it's 11 players on a pitch kicking the ball around I'd rather be in the Premier League but the championship has that level of intensity and competitiveness that the Premier League doesn't have I think you're right the players your players particularly will be ready for it Championship's fun. It's a good fun league. You'll enjoy it next season. Yeah, yeah, shut up. <laughs> You'll enjoy uh, getting spanked in the Champions League if you get there. Oh, sorry, you've got the group stages to go through, you? so there we go. Is there anything, Tomo, historically that we can learn from that back in the last season, though? 
in terms of rotation? Was was there anything historically there or? Um, not really. We, we kept most of the same same team really. I mean, um, we didn't rotate much. I mean, the defense doesn't change at all really that much. And Norwood and Fleck are pretty nailed. Um, I think there'll be some rotation with the forwards. I think you'll see Burge and Lundstrom flip flopping, but I think it'll be. I think the defenders are way to go because they're going to be nailed to play. And yeah, I think the the back five. I, just a little question on Stevens, just because I, I know with your guys, Tomo, that if someone plays well, they tend to hold on onto the shirt. Now, what we don't know is the three months from Osborne's performance against Norwich. <laughs> well, what does that mean? We've no idea. Um, but I, I, I suspect that other than the back five, there will be rotation, which will put a lot of people off. Even people like maybe Fleck might get yeah. the odd rest or two, whereas he, he might not, because, I mean, he could play Lundstrom and Burge together in one particular game, couldn't he? I don't see him playing around. Definitely that back three. Don't see him playing yeah. around with that at all. And I, I actually, as well, Adam, don't see too much rotation lightly for yourselves. I think in terms of the key men, the, the Mings, McGinn, Grealish, if, if they've got two legs together, they're going to play. I think even people like Samata at the moment looks like he's probably going to have to play up front. So I think that the core of, of the Villa spine as well, I don't think it's going to change so much. And I think you might see that uh, across the... And I don't mean to include you in this, Tomo, but the, the bottom six, I think you'll see less rotation than what you see across the, the rest of the league. That's, that's my instinct on that. And that's why I think as well, there'll be some very good uh, assets from all of the bottom six sides, even Norwich as well. There will be some from all of them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I've still got Todd Campbell in my squad. And he's it's fine. Play. He's going to yeah, play the majority. Same. Mm. I thought we're going to have a double with a midfield and McGinn, Fleck, Campwell, and we're going to have anyone over seven million at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I, like I know. Um, by the way, oh. I bring Dier a lot for Norwich. Yeah, I just he's don't a really think he's a, he's he's a good player. I just don't think he's delivered as an FPL pick, uh, particularly this season. Um, James and I haven't spoken to correspondents for so long. I feel like we could just sit here and chat until the, the sun goes down. But we do have to be fair with with your guys' time as well. We always. I'd like to end the Clash of the Correspondents with a score prediction. Um, for, for, and I know it's a week out. We don't know the lineups. But 18 days it. away. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Um, Tomo, first, go on. Tell us, what do you think you're going to come back into? 2-0. Yeah. Pretty confident. You're only going to lose uh, by two. That's fair. And uh, Adam? I, I, think, I think Villa have to win. And I think they will win. And I think it'll be 2-1. So, I don't see a clean sheet. But I think 2-1 <laughs> Villa. I, I, I would say, I, I think 2-1. I do think Villa will get on the score sheet with uh, Grealish and Samata because you're going to have to. But I think Sheffield United's strength is going to tell. I think 2-1 to Sheffield United is going to... They're going to edge it just because of the quality. And, and it's going to be a tight game. One goal in it. Do you think, Adam, it's must win because of what's left fixture-wise as well? Because on paper, you've got one of the toughest, without doubt. I think it's. I think we've got to avoid defeat because I think it's more for morale than anything else. I think if we come back and start with a defeat, we've got tough fixtures on paper. But I, I just think it would it, it it could destroy us and be you know. I think on the flip side though, if we come back and start with a win, I'd expect it to to you know to because we've got. I think we've got. We depending on how the fixtures fall, we could have Newcastle and Wolves um, after Chelsea. And I think they're games that we could get something out of. So I think if Villa win, I think it, it'll be. The, I think I do think it's make or break either way. A draw, who knows what's going to happen? But I think if we lose, I think we'll find it hard to come back. I think if we win, it it could really be the start of something to to keep us up. I'm, and I do I'm, think it's that important. I'm going to go with one bold prediction. I think if you lose to Sheffield United and if you lose to Chelsea. I think you'll change the manager. I don't think we will. I think we think if we're going to do that, we'd have done it. Interesting. But... It was a perfect 30 second micro. <laughs> we're going to snip out of this and it's coming back in two weeks, maybe. Brilliant, guys. Thank you so much for that. Brilliant. Yeah. I, do you know yes. what I just had to do um, was uh, jump on and check the deadline for Champ Man because I forgot that it's today. <laughs> so we have to end the show because everybody knows I forget to make my transfers and today I'm not going to do it. Talking in the past again as usual. So. We are in the past, but everybody knows. Uh, how are you doing, Tom? Are you doing all right in that old game? Yeah, I'm up to 62nd now. 
So. Nice. Adam, you, you're not playing. No, nah, I'm not in it. No, no unfortunately not. No, nah, he's making money on Football Index. We ain't said it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll have a few devs about that. I do want to get involved with that, but it'll be like my gambling history, which means I lose mm. money. So uh, perhaps not. I'll just invest it with you. There we go. Guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, first catch of the correspondence back after a while. Feels, feels good to be back into just chatting about football with people and games that are real. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Do you want to just let the um, the one or two listeners who don't know where they can find you know where they can find you on Twitter or wherever else, Tomo? Yeah, FBL underscore Boyd. Nice. And and Adam, you are? A- Ahopcroft13. Nice. Um, James, what have we got left for everybody in the lead up to football restarting? Let everybody know. Stream on YouTube tomorrow, back with full content next week, includes the return of uh, Sky on Wednesday. Obviously, we'll, we'll talk about the other two teams who have doubles that return in. We've got Johnny Pringle and uh, Adam Pritchard talking City and Arsenal next Thursday as well. Fantastic. Um, I wonder, if, will City's court case have been done by next Thursday? I can't remember the date for it. You never uh, know. It, is, it is Monday to Wednesday next week scheduled. We are going to record with the guys on Lovely, the Tuesday, jubbly. unfortunately. Oh, man. But, yeah. Sure, it only takes one day to give a guilty verdict, so you never know. We might, it we might in be able City's to case, it could be. It might, be. it might be done yeah. by lunchtime on Monday. <laughs> um, to, to all the listeners out there, um, wherever you're getting a podcast, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher or what have you, do make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe and the notification bell. You'll know as soon as we put new content out, as well as when James goes live with any Champman streams and uh, the Friday Ask James stream as well. One other quick ask, we are nominated as finalists in the Football Content Awards and you only have until June the 18th to vote in those. So if you're a regular listener to the show and do like us, um, then you can head over to the Football Content Awards, either on Twitter or, or what have you, and vote for us. We need all the pats on the back we can get, just a nice little ego massage. Isn't that right, James? Yeah, and we'll shout out for Adam's boys as well. You can vote for Fancy Football yes, Club on um, the editorial uh, as well. That's the, uh, the so there's, and, there's three and, categories. And, and that's where our vote's going. I'm not criticising anyone else. I'm just saying the truth. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, all importantly, guys, once again, thank you for joining us during uh, this, this kind of virtual time. Uh, we really do appreciate it uh, once again. So thank you again. Is that it? Is that, is that your that's wrap I was. What else do we? What else do we want to you talk normally about? Normally, have like a line you say, and then I. Finish. I have. That's that's coming. Uh, which is, <laughs> stay safe. Ciao for now. Be nice to each other, everyone. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Tomo. Cue the music, man, child. Cheers. I'm going to do my Chapman team. <laughs>